smoke many campfire of Indian village. <laughs> it harvest time now. Soon braves thank great spirit for plenty good harvest. That's right, Chief Brain in the face. <laughs> yeah, just so long as it isn't mud in the face, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, look at the beautiful color in those leaves. Seems a shame to have to burn them or bury them. Yes, but it's a natural process of nature to return them to the elements from which they came. But as you say, the colors are... Hey, look out! Huh? The hey, child's the going in the street! I'll get him! Hey, look out for the car, Bill! Oh, Bill! What's going on there, kid? going fast ranger honest i wasn't all of a sudden i saw the child and then the ranger darted out in front of me and threw the child out of the way i tried to stop but there wasn't time enough are uh, you right henry you saw the whole thing it's not your fault you're not under arrest but you have to come along to the sheriff's office and make report sure sure i'll gladly do anything i can to help this is terrible you don't know how terrible it is to hit someone with your car it made me sick inside sick all over take it easy boy Lift him gently out of the stretcher. Don't worry, Stumpy. We'll take good care of Bill. See you at the hospital. Okay, Sonny. Now, you take it easy. I know this is bad happening, but it's no good if you have nervous breakdown. I have doctor give you a shot. I'll be all right after a while. I just hope your ranger friend's going to be all right. I hope I wasn't going fast enough to kill him. I don't think you were, mister. Your car had almost stopped when you ran into him. But let's get to a hospital. It looked more like an uh, ostrich egg. <laughs> you said it, Gray Wolf. <laughs> Bill, you ought to see the front end of that car with your head in it. What a mess. <laughs> All right, you guys. <laughs> I know I'm hard-headed, but not rock-headed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you win. The doc says you're all right. You can come home with us. Oh, good. Let's get out of here before they change their mind. <laughs> what matter, Bill? A uh, nurse not pretty? Yeah. I'll give you a pretty nurse right in the head. <laughs> he wants to give you a rise on your head so he can have company. <laughs> um, how's the child, Ray? Well, oh, he's safe. Only a few scratches when you throw him on lawn. But he's fine. How about the driver of the car? Well, he's waiting downstairs, young feller. He's all shook up and... We better get down there and tell him you're all right. Yeah, do that by all means. Wasn't his fault. I'll be down as soon as I check out at the desk. I'll get the door, Mom. Hello, Mr. Jefferson. Uh, my name's Gil Major. I'd... Uh... I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes, if I may. Oh, certainly, Mr. Major. Uh, come on in, please. Oh, thank you. Have a seat. Thank you. Oh, what's on your mind? Mr. Jefferson, I... I like Bill better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bill, you had a pretty close shave of death yesterday, and... Well, I'd like to talk to you about life insurance. Oh. Mm -hmm. I don't want to seem cruel, but... I feel it's a service to folks to follow up on this sort of thing. Because a person who's had a close shave thinks more about insurance now than when they get over their scare. Yes, that's true. You know, and I know, that insurance coverage bought many years ago isn't adequate to take care of beneficiaries today and during this high cost of living. Those who are the bread earners in the family should increase their earnings. So if and when something happens, those who are left behind will have enough money to live on and maintain the standard of living they enjoyed while the income provider was around. Mm -hmm. Also, life insurance provides an investment for the insured so that he can have money for the retiring years of his life. He can also have his premiums earn interest each year during the prime years. The most important fact is that we all need to examine our insurance coverage to make sure that it'll provide good protection for those who are left behind in case anything happens. Yes, I think you're right. In fact, I have two insurance programs going, one with a company in the East and the other with the Eternal Life Insurance Company. The uh, Eternal Life Insurance Company? Mm-hmm. 
A policy taken out with this company provides protection to the insured after death, guarantees eternal life, and the premiums were paid in full 2,000 years ago, and the beneficiary is the insured. I never heard of such coverage as that. It's impossible. On the contrary, Gil, it's very real and practical. Everyone should have this insurance. The insurance you sell covers until death and then pays off. The insurance I'm talking about covers after death and pays off for eternity. Utterly fantastic. Uh, you won't find the Eternal Life Insurance Company listed in your blue book, Gil. I won't? No. But it's listed in this book. Oh, what, what book is that? The Bible. Oh, the Bible. I have the proper life insurance that you sell, but let me sell you some of this insurance, which you don't have, and I do. Oh, uh, well, uh, not right now, Bill. I, I've got an appointment. In fact, I'm already late for it. I'll see you again about life insurance. Well, that's too bad, Gil. You, you really need this coverage. Yeah, uh, well, perhaps some other time. I really must be going. Uh, good day. Well, good day. Oh, oh Gil? Yes? Uh, think about these points seriously, will you? Protection for you after death. Guarantee of eternal life. The premium's been paid in full. You are your own beneficiary. <laughs> you ought to sell insurance, Bill. You really can make it stick. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry to hear of your husband's death, Mrs. Connors. We would have been married 30 years next month, Mr. Major. I'm going to miss him terribly. Yes, that's a long time to become attached to a person. Hey, he left you well provided for. Incidentally, there's some forms you'll have to sign as beneficiary of your husband's life insurance policy. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, sign here, please. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fine. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Connors. You'll receive the checks in the mail within a few days. You're very kind. I guess I will need money after all. I'm glad Thomas had those policies. He never earned a large salary, but we had a comfortable life together. I'm sure you did. Well, I must be going. Well, thank you again. You're quite welcome. Uh... Mr. Major. Yes, ma'am? Life insurance is really a wonderful thing, and it's needed so badly. Well, after these things happen, well, the beneficiary needs it so well, that is to settle things. Well, I wonder, why is it that some people refuse to buy it? <laughs> I wish I knew the answer to that, Mrs. Connors. It's sad when the beneficiary is left nearly destitute. Everyone needs life insurance. Oh... Good night. Gil, you need eternal life insurance. This insurance covers after death and pays off for eternity. Uh, Katie, will you bring me the prospect file? Yeah, Gil, right away. Hello, Gil. How's business? Oh, not bad, Pete. Not bad at all. How's it with you? Likewise. Say, uh, I've got a puzzler for you. Ever heard of this company? Here's the prospect file, Gail. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, put it right there. I ran across this company while uh, revising an insurance program for a client. Boy, he's an old-timer. This company's got a policy with must be, too. Mm -hmm. Now, let me look in my blue book of defunct companies. I've never heard of this one, and it's not listed in my book of companies that failed. You won't find the Eternal Life Insurance Company listed in your book, Gil. It's in this book, the Bible. Gil, snap out of it, man. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Pete. That's all right. Man, you look like you were a million miles away. I guess I was. Anything wrong? No, not a thing. Everything's all right. Sorry, Pete. Well, I don't know how you can find out about that old company. Why don't you ask Snyder? He's had experience in that part of the country. That's a good idea. Thanks. <laughs> Whoever thought I'd run across a company not listed in the blue book? 
I see here that Mr. Dupre hasn't paid his hospitalization premium yet. Yeah, he hasn't. I've sent him several late notices, but he keeps ignoring them. His policy will last soon. Mm -hmm. I'd better call him on the phone. His number's right there, on top of the file. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Dupre? Yes? Uh, this is Gil Major, your insurance broker. Huh. I've been a bad boy, haven't I? <laughs> I'll say you have, sir. You might need that policy, and it's not worth the paper it's printed on if we don't get the premium payment, you know. I know. I'm the world's worst put-it-off-until-tomorrow type of character. I'll send you a check right away. Uh, can I uh, depend on that, or uh, <laughs> should I come out and get it? Well, listen here now. What kind of talk is this? Any... Oh, Mr. Dupre, I'm only thinking of you. That's my job, you know. I understand you're a busy man, and you have a lot of important things on your mind, but, well... All right, Gil. You win. I promise to send you a check now as soon as I hang up the phone. That's fine. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. I wish people wouldn't be so careless about their premium payments. Dangerous practice. Their policy might lapse. Right. A lapse policy is no policy. The premium was paid in full 2,000 years ago. Eternal life insurance can never lapse for lack of premium payment. <laughs> You want to see me, Chief? Yes, Gil. How'd you make out with uh, Bill Jefferson? I didn't. He listened to me, and then he told me he'd already revised his insurance program. And you let it go at that? Yes, I... I did. What kind of a salesman are you? You know better than that. You're slipping, Gil. If you can sell Bill Jefferson, you've got a foot in the door to contact every ranger under his command. Yes, I... I know. I know something, too. What's that? You'd better not muff this next thing or the fur is going to fly and it'll be the fur off your hide. Yes, sir. Now, you contact Bill Jefferson again. And this time you sell him, understand? But what if he's got enough life insurance? Some men do, you know. What's well, getting into you? You're the top salesman in the district. Are you afraid of Bill? No, I don't think so. Well, what are you waiting for? Get going. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Bill. Uh, were you coming to see me at the office? Well, no, I, I was just passing by on the way to see a prospect. Oh, it's too bad. I'd like to talk to you some more about life insurance. Oh, fine. I've got time if you have. I can delay my appointment. Good. Uh, I have time right now. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Um, what kind of life insurance are we going to talk about? Yours or uh, mine? Well, that all depends on who's the better salesman. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I don't want anything to do with religion. <laughs> Eternal life insurance, as you call it. The insurance I sell is the most important kind there is. Have you got a policy that can match it? <laughs> of course not. I don't want anything to do with your kind of religion. Who ever heard of paying for eternal life with blood? The blood of Jesus is the only way you can be cleansed from sin, Gil. And we're all sinners. God's word tells us that. I'm not a sinner by any means. What do you mean? Do you think you're God? I wouldn't sell you insurance if you begged me to on your hands and knees. Well, how'd you make out with Bill Jefferson yesterday, Gil? I didn't. What? He's an unreasonable man, Chief. He, well, he's trying to sell me religion. Well, what's wrong with that? Bill's one of the most reasonable men I know. Religion never hurt anybody, you know. Go over there and talk to him and let him try to sell you eternal life insurance, as he calls it. Eternal life insurance? <laughs> Say, that's not bad. Not bad at all. I wonder where he got that. Uh, he says something about the Bible. Ah, yes, yes, of course. Bill's a fine Christian gentleman. He'd naturally get it from the Bible. You, uh, 
still want me to sell him? Do I still want you to sell him? Of course I want you to sell him. But I... But no buts about it. You get over there and sell him. If you can't sell him, at least get his permission to talk to his men, understand? Well, this is a free country. I can talk to his men any time I want to. Not when they're on duty, you don't. Off duty, yes. But they'll be mighty hard to catch up with then. Religion never hurt anybody, Gil. Maybe you need eternal life insurance, as Bill calls it. Gil, you need eternal life insurance. It covers after death and pays off for eternity. Gil. Huh. Oh, yes. Honestly, I'm beginning to think you need a vacation. Maybe a permanent one. You're acting very strange lately. If you hadn't forced me on the bill, I wouldn't be acting this way. Listen, Gil. Bill is one of the finest men I know. Yeah, he's got religion, as you call it. But he makes it work. And there isn't a soul for a hundred miles around here who doesn't respect that man. And the hundreds of people he's helped have a deep affection for him. I know what's wrong with you. You're under conviction, as Bill calls it. Yeah? Well, I don't care what you call it. I'm not going back there to try to sell him insurance or his men. How do you like that? I don't. And see how you like this. If you don't knuckle down and overcome the sales barrier and personal problem between you and Bill, you're fired. Understand? F-I-R-E-D, fire. Maybe you won't have to fire me because I might just quit. Q-U-I-T, quit. Now, Bill, don't you say a word until I'm through with what I've got to say. All right, Gil. You've almost cost me my job with this religious nonsense of yours. And now you've got to give me permission to talk to your men about life insurance. Mm-hmm. There won't be any high-pressure stuff. I just want the privilege to talk to them on a factual basis... Plus some good salesmanship. Well, you're welcome to talk to my men, Gil. But, well, you, you mean you're not going to try to stop me because I won't buy this religious stuff you're going to try to pour down my throat? Well, of course not. I wouldn't be a Christian attitude on my part. This is a free country. You go right ahead and talk with the men. I'm sure that you'll find that some of them need insurance. <laughs> Thank you very much. You surprised me. How's that? Well, I, I've always thought that religious people were narrow-minded. Gil, you can catch more bees with sugar than you can with salt. Yeah, I guess you can. Well, I'd better get to work. Thanks again. Hey, you're quite welcome. Bill, uh, how come you haven't tried to sell me uh, eternal life insurance? I have. All the time you've been here. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Guess what? You tell me. I've gotten Bill's permission to see his man. Well, Boy, Gil, now you're back in the groove. <laughs> you know, I didn't have a bit of trouble with Bill. I just told him what I wanted, and he said, go right ahead. In fact, is he encouraged me. You know, he's a pretty nice guy. <laughs> he didn't even try to sell me eternal life insurance. <laughs> That's what you think. Bill's a pretty shrewd salesman. Yeah, I guess you're right. Oh, there's three words I just can't get out of my mind. Uh, eternal life insurance? Yeah. But the mood will be made of green cheese before I go for religion. Well, I'd better get to work. Okay, Gil. Give it all you've got. You've got a good chance to get the bonus this year. And it isn't peanuts. Goodbye. So long, Chief. Eternal life insurance. Eternal life insurance. Eternal life insurance. I'm glad you called, Gil. I've been thinking about increasing my life insurance because I plan to get married within the next year. I guess everyone can use more insurance. Gil, you need eternal life insurance. I'm too old now, Sonny, to take out more insurance. The premium would be too high. Besides, I don't have anyone to name as beneficiary. You are the beneficiary when you accept an eternal life insurance policy, Gil. I like more insurance, Gil. You tell me kind of plan you have in mind. I want guaranteed income for those I leave behind. You would have a guarantee of eternal life. 
Well, thanks anyhow, Gil, but I don't need life insurance. Gil, you need eternal life insurance. Eternal. 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 Jefferson, I don't know what you're doing to me, but it won't work. It won't work, you understand? Everywhere I go, I keep hearing your words in my mind, but I won't give in. I just won't. Even if I have to quit the insurance business and go far away. You can't sell me religion, do you hear? Yes, Gil, I hear you. I'm not deaf. Now, what's troubling you? You and your crazy eternal life insurance idea. I, I just can't get away from it. I see. Gil, will you listen to what I have to say? It may help you. I suppose. Go ahead. Please sit down. Thanks. Gil, I've been praying for you. For me? Why? Let me answer your question by explaining the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has always longed for a way to bring man back to himself after he'd sinned. For from the days of Adam, men have been his enemies, have strayed away from him. God's great plan was to send his own son to reconcile us and to do so by living a perfect life and offering himself as a substitute to bear the punishment for our sins. Therefore, Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood to pay once and for all for the sins of all men. His sacrifice was final and conclusive. Gil, your problem is that the Holy Spirit is dealing with you since the first time I spoke to you about your soul. You're trying to fight the Lord. And I can tell you right now, you won't win. If you don't ask Christ to come into your life, you'll be miserable until you do. Can't you see that the Lord's plan of salvation is the only way to eternal life? He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Those are the words from our Lord, Gil. You can't buy eternal life. It's a gift if you will accept Jesus as your Savior by faith. What do you say? Gil, the boss wants to see you. Thanks, Katie. What's up, Chief? Gil, do you realize that you're a top man on the totem pole for the bonus? And there are only a few days left to make the bonus requirements. Yes, sir, I realize that. Well, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. I, I'm not interested. Gil, you're insane. I'm going to call a doctor. You're in bad shape. You mean to sit there and tell me you're going to let $2,000 slip right through your fingers without even trying? Yes, sir. All right. What is it this time? It's... Still the same old story. Bill Jefferson. Yeah. Who else? You mean God. Listen, Gil. I'm not a religious man, but I know one thing. What's that? If God's talking to you, you had better do something about it. And I know Bill has told you the same thing in finer detail because he's the man who knows. That fellow walks with God. I won't do it. I tell you, I won't do it. Gil, let me give you some sound advice. You go over your production record since you've been fighting God and take a look at the facts. You've slipped badly, and you're going to keep on slipping. I want to see you do something about it. Gil. Yes, sir. I always consider you a top salesman. How long I've been. You don't even know a good thing when you see it. You can't buy eternal life, Gil. It's a gift if you'll accept Jesus as your savior by faith. Eternal life insurance. Eternal. Eternal. <laughs> There's 
is the policy, Mark, that will put me in the bonus money. What do you think of that? Oh, I think it's great. I'm glad to see you're back at your usual self. <laughs> you must have decided to take Bill's advice and uh, become a Christian. I did not. I've shaken it off. <laughs> well, apparently God's through talking to me, if that's what it was. Now, Bill Jefferson's lost his hold on me. But that guy's sure a terrific salesman. Eternal life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> But God hasn't given up. The Holy Spirit hasn't given up, Gil Major. I haven't given up praying for you, Gil. I believe that someday you will meet the Lord face to face. But don't delay. No man can hide from God. For God is eternal. Eternal. Eternal.